The mother in a coffin is called by her baby. The people looked completely astonished at this scene, so tender and macabre at the same time. Tears, expectation, and amazement to see what the child was doing filled the atmosphere with that sad and lamentable funeral. The child began to feel so restless in his grandmother's arms that she quickly passed him to his father, who, taking him, could feel how the child's body trembled, as if he had a fever. Somehow, such a small creature could understand what was happening. He felt the pain of everyone present, and perhaps he himself felt the same pain of everyone at the funeral. The father watched as his little boy reached for the whole body in the casket where his mother's remains rested. Look at the baby. He is looking for his mother. Look how he is looking for her, said the people who witnessed that sad moment. A child eager to know where the person he loves and needs the most is. He tried his best to get close to the coffin. Unable to contain the baby, he approached where the cold and motionless body of his wife, whom he loved so much, lay. Hesitated for a moment at the thought of placing his little baby in front of his mother's motionless body. The closer the man came to the coffin, the more and more restless the child became. But how did all this happen? How was it possible that this young, robust, and full-of-life woman was about to be buried? How did it happen? Everyone present knew the story of those young men. He of the rich Walt was aristocratic, the son of the largest landowners in the region who owned thousands of acres of land and hundreds of thousands of head of cattle. His family was the wealthiest ranching family in all of Texas, descended from Mexican parents. She was a peerless beauty, raised from a young age by her diligent and hard-working grandmother who made Matilda a woman any man would want to marry. From childhood, these two souls were destined for each other, but this great difference in origin and family roots made this relationship look bad from the beginning, and no one thought it would work out. But love is always a stubborn bet that goes against the current. The father's family, in their eagerness to keep him away from that woman who in their eyes was simple and unattractive, sent the young man to study abroad. There, his parents told themselves that the young man would meet another life. Other people fall in love and forget what they thought was a youthful whim. Time passed and this love was kept alive by the incessant written letters that never stopped coming and going. Time, in its ceaseless march, passed, and he finished his studies. And contrary to what they expected, his parents remained single, and he did not doubt for a moment what his next destination would be, his hometown. The arrival of the heir Walt was quite an event in that region. The young people, now of age, married, and, to avoid the uncomfortable disapproval of their parents, decided to move to the capital of the country. There, a few months later, their first child, a beautiful boy named Ben, was born. Shortly thereafter, Walt's parents sought out the couple and apologized for not supporting them as they deserved. They also moved to the capital with the intention of being closer to their grandson and accompanying Matilda in the upbringing of her son. Everything was going on in the most harmonious way between the young mother, the little boy, and her in-laws. Until one day, suddenly while Matilda was preparing the baby to put him in the crib, she fainted, completely losing consciousness. The young woman was rushed to the hospital, but the efforts and maneuvers that the doctors performed on Matilda's body were useless. She surrendered to death. The diagnosis was a sudden drop in blood pressure, which caused the fatal outcome. Preparations were made for the funeral and the pitiful scene took place. A young and full-of-life father, carrying one and a half-year-old son in his arms, who became more and more agitated as his father moved him closer to the coffin of his recently deceased mother. The father asked that the coffin lid be opened so that little Ben could see his mother one last time. As the coffin lid was removed, the little boy jumped with excitement, stretched out his soft little hands towards his mother, called out to her in a tender, childlike way. Everyone heard that eternal sob coming out of that innocent mouth. The father, with teary eyes, contemplated that image of his little son calling out to his dead mother. The man began to remove the baby from in front of his mother's body when he noticed a soft moan coming from his wife's body. He moved a little closer and, with great difficulty, noticed a faint breath coming out of his wife's nose. The news spread like wildfire. Matilda was pronounced dead in the hospital and suddenly, 
due to the moans and calls of her little baby, she was back from death's own doorstep. The investigation that immediately followed made everything clear. Matilda's in-laws planned her murder using the time she was spending with her grandson as an excuse. They looked for the right opportunity to put her on powerful sleeping pills that would lead to her death. Somehow, Matilda's body had sunk into such a deep sleep that the doctors considered her dead and some time passed and, with the calls that her little boy made to her, Matilda regained consciousness and then the hateful plan of her in-laws came to light. 